Hi everyone and welcome to one of the first overviews of FL Studio 20. In this video we're going to take a quick look at all of the new features that FL 20 brings to the table. So right away you'll notice that we've skipped straight from version 12 right up to 20 and this is just to mark the 20th anniversary of the product. Uh, for those of you who'd like to see a complete list of updates which would include bug fixes, you'll find all of the relevant documentation in the support section of ImageLine's website. So right off the bat, uh, one of the greatest and most anticipated features is that FL Studio is now available as a 64-bit native Mac OS app. Uh, you'll now have support for both Audio Unit, uh, or AU as it's more commonly known, as well as VST support. As far as I know, project files will be compatible on both platforms and you'll also be able to use the same license across the board. So what you see on screen right now is the default project that will load up when you first open FL20. It highlights some of the new features quite well, so I figured it would be a good place to start things off. Um, one of the main features that many have been looking forward to is the addition of time signature markers. So previously projects could only be set to one time signature, uh, whereas now we can conveniently switch between various signatures using these new things called time signature markers, uh, which you'll see up here. And if I play this, you'll clearly notice the signature switch. And if you look at the grid, you'll also see a change from four beats in a bar to three. Now I'm not going to get into too much detail on how exactly to do everything since this is just an overview video, but I'll just quickly note that to add these time signature markers, uh, simply select a point on the playlist and hold down Alt, Shift and T. And the same principle also applies when working in the piano roll. So moving on, we have another key update which is to consolidate playlist clips, or more commonly known as freezing. So this allows you to render any selected clips to audio in order to save on CPU. There are multiple ways to do this, so I'll just quickly show you one or two of them. So if we select an entire playlist track by right clicking on it and going to consolidate this track. From here you can choose to render it either from where the playlist track begins or from the start of the song itself. Now another way might be to select multiple tracks at once. So if I go ahead and highlight a group of patterns, I'll show you how this works. So first of all, just highlight your region by holding down control. And then using the playlist menu in the upper left, just go to tools, consolidate playlist selection, and I'll just uh, do it from selection start. Uh, from here you have all your various rendering algorithms. And as you'll see, it just automatically mutes the parts that you've rendered so they don't overlap, which is pretty handy. So let's just undo that. We can also hide playlist groups by clicking this arrow beside the mute and solo light. And there's also this sort of mini playlist preview up in the scroll bar here. And it's the same thing over on the piano roll. Now, a brilliant new feature is the additional arrangement windows that uh, can now be created. So previously we only had the one playlist, which basically limited us to one arrangement. But now we can remedy that by clicking playlist arrangement here. And from here we can choose a blank slate for new arrangements by clicking the add one at the bottom. Now from this same window we can also delete and clone and also switch between various arrangements that we've made. I'm not sure how many arrangements are available at this stage but it seemed to let me add as many as I like when I tried it out earlier on today. Now this feature is particularly useful because it gives us room to try out different structures and ideas conveniently from the same project file. Previously, you would have had to save a new file before making any major changes. So this is just a great way to try out new things with your track without having to leave the actual file itself. So another major addition to FL20 is revamped PDC, which stands for Plugin Delay Compensation. This was always a bit of a fickle issue in previous versions and was never truly optimized for the users who needed it. So automatic PDC will now work for all normal use cases, including for mixer sends which means that manual and auto PDC can now coexist. It's not something I'll be demonstrating using the current project file as it runs exclusively on native plugins and so PDC isn't really much of an issue here. But if you're utilizing third-party plugins and recording audio, these new sets of updates will be uh, very handy. 
You'll also be able to reset manual latency on all tracks by going into the mixer options here and clicking the PDC tab. But in other words, PDC should now be simple and straightforward without, without any sort of nitpicking. And when using the sort of uh, wet and dry parameters on the mixer effect slots here, you'll also be delay compensated. So this will be handy for when you're, you know, automating these. The latency compensation also extends to the likes of the metronome too. Now, up next is one of the more obvious features. So you'll have noticed that the main toolbar has received a bit of a design update, but more importantly, if we right click an empty space in the toolbar, you'll see this edit feature up here. So from here, we can basically reorganize icons uh, that are already on the toolbar, add in new panels and also save presets of various toolbar templates. Most people will be happy with the default layout, but if there's anything you'd like to change about it, then this is basically the place to do it. So let's go back and let's take a look at the return of two classic features. So first of all, if we look at the channel rack here, you'll notice that the graph editor in the upper right hand corner is back. So from here, we can easily edit things like velocity, panning and pitch straight from the channel rack itself. Now, the second classic feature is the return of the pre-computed legacy effects within the sampler channels. So let's just open this kick drum here and show you them. We have the likes of a ring modulation. Uh, we have some boost with clipping. And an EQ and filter and some reverb and stereo delay. So if we just go back to the playlist for a moment. If we scroll down here, here, you'll notice that the maximum amount of playlist tracks available has increased from 199 all the way up to 500. Now, it's not likely that you'll need as many, but it's still good to have the option available. And also, while using audio recording into the playlist, you'll see real-time displays of audio data as it's captured, and multiple takes will be grouped. So recording directly to the playlist is done in the same way as before. If you just click record up in the transport panel here, we also have a slight tweak to time markers, so let's access one by highlighting somewhere in the timeline here and pressing Alt and T. So if we right click this time marker, you'll notice new additional options. At the bottom here, titled Punch In and Punch Out Recording, which will allow you to start and stop recording between your determined markers. Another nice addition is the option for further stutter patterns when using audio clips. Previously, I think we only had around four, but if we click on a vocal clip here and head towards the stutter presets, you'll notice that the list is much more comprehensive that is what, than it was before. So let's just quickly take a listen through some of them. So let's move on now and talk about some of the plugin updates. I believe there have been about 25 updated plugins, but there aren't too many major updates in this category otherwise. So I'll just have a quick look through a couple here. Now the first up would be Edison. So it now has the ability to export 24 bit files. We also have a few latency updates for the likes of Fruity Compressor and Fruity Convolver, as well as the addition of linear phase EQ presets for the Convolver. Uh, the likes of Fruity Reverb 2 now has a modulation section, so let's just go ahead and quickly demonstrate that. And I should also note that Fruity Reverb 1 is now a 64-bit plugin. Uh, some more general updates would include the likes of reduced memory usage in Patcher, as well as bug fixes for most plugins such as GMS, Bass Drum, Drumax, and many more. And one final point to make here is the addition of the new VFX Level Scaler plugin, which runs through Patcher itself. It's a bit too comprehensive for an overview video such as this, but I would recommend digging into the manual a bit to see what it's capable of. So let's take a quick look over the mixer. 
first thing you'll notice is that the mixer tracks have increased from 104 all the way up to 125, which I think is long overdue, especially when you're working with larger project files. I've also heard that future updates plan to bring even more mixer tracks to the table. Uh, if we look at the mixer layout window here, you'll see that we have two new alternative options for wide and compact. Another handy tool is to reset mixer tracks to their default states by right clicking on one and selecting reset. Now previously we had to load the default mixer state preset from the file option so this is a nice improvement in terms of workflow. You can also do this for multiple tracks at a time to make things even easier. Now that we have all of the main features out of the way I'm going to just do a quick run through of what's left and there's a lot of minor bug fixes and improvements that don't really warrant too much time so I'm just going to pick out what I think will be most relevant to most users. So if we go ahead and load up the sampler channel here of the kick drum you'll see that we have this start offset option here which is sort of similar to the sample start function on the right so I'm just going to show you the two of them. Now one important note is that the start offset parameter can be automated where this, whereas the sample start cannot so this could prove to be a sort of interesting tool in terms of sound design. Uh, besides sample start we have the length parameter here which is a bit like the out function only that it doesn't actually fade the tail of the sound off and instead sort of stops the sample immediately where you tell it to do so. So now let's go up to the Options tab and click on General Settings. Over on the right here you'll see this new High Visibility option, which when enabled will make switches and selected icons a bit more obvious and kind of appealing to the eye. Uh, there are also some new features regarding MIDI importing, so if you take a look at the screenshot up on the screen, you'll see that two new options are available. The first is Import Time Signatures, which allows you to add time signature data from the MIDI file to the pattern and the piano roll. And secondly, we have import zero velocity notes, which basically treats notes with a velocity of zero as note on instead of the default note off messages. So if we go back up to options and into file settings, you'll see here that the previous shared data folder has been renamed to user data folder. And this folder will be automatically searched for samples without actually having to be in one of the specific search paths. And if we visit the help tab up here, and if you were to click the help index, you would now be taken to an online version of the manual, whereas previously this took you to an offline version. Now the offline manual can still be downloaded from the website if you need to do so. Another small change would be the ability to purchase demo plugins directly from the software. So if you save a project which makes use of demo versions or demo plugins, you'll now have the ability to make in-app purchases. And previously when regist registering FL Studio, you would have had to download a reg key to validate your software. But now we can just visit the a About tab in the Help section here and use our login credentials to uh, validate your software. And finally, as always, ImageLine have continued with lifetime free updates. So basically all users should immediately be able to download FL Studio 20 now, as well as all future betas when they're released. So I hope this overview has been insightful and cheers for taking the time to listen. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.